So about six months ago, I sold my beloved camper van, my camper van that took me up and down the country and gave me many landscape photography adventures. And since selling the van, I've slept in my car, I've camped in my tent, but nothing beats having a vehicle, a comfortable space to go to sleep and wake up on location. So I am very excited today to finally be collecting my new van. This is my brand new 2002 Mitsubishi Delica. Oh, it's a beauty. Oh, and a uh, big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. If you need a website, go to squarespace.com forward slash Heaton. So you might be wondering why six months? Why did it take six months between selling my van and getting this new beauty? Well, it all comes down to basically me being quite fussy. I knew I wanted this vehicle because I think I think as you get older, the, the vehicles that remind you of your childhood seem to become so much more appealing. And I remember having a Mitsubishi Delica on my street as I grew up, and I always admired them, the rugged look. They kind of looked a bit like, uh, I don't know, like a Mad Max type vehicle, maybe. Anyway, um, I wanted a very specific type. I wanted two-tone bodywork. I wanted fog lights. I wanted a rear ladder, and I wanted one that was in as good as condition as possible. And the only way to get exactly what I wanted was to import one freshly from Japan. And that is exactly what I've done, and that is exactly why it's taken six months to arrive. So this Delica has a three liter V6 petrol engine, and it came off the boat from Japan in excellent condition. Now you can pick these up secondhand, well obviously this is secondhand, it's 2002, but you can pick them up off eBay. But I, uh, I wanted that relationship with the dealer, basically, because this is a fresh import, you have a much better, or at least I have, a much better idea of the history of it. So by importing it through a dealer, like I've done now, you have that certain peace of mind and that ongoing relationship. So let me tell you exactly what has been done to this van since arriving off the ferry from Japan. The company I used to import my Delica was Adventure Motor Vehicles. And when imports come in from Japan, they do quite a lot of work in order to make sure that the vehicle is in good order and suitable for driving in the UK. Most notably, they do a full service body repair work to get rid of any dings and scratches, and they add new tires, a UK stereo, and wax seal the underside to protect it from corrosion caused by salt on the roads. My van also got a new alternator, brake pads and discs, timing belt, power steering pulley, and a bunch of other bits and pieces that I don't quite understand. I also added some optional upgrades which cost extra, including an upgraded stereo, refurbished wheels and these BFG all-terrain tyres, curtains on all rear windows and a tow bar. So that's pretty much everything I've done to the vehicle and upgraded. Uh, so yeah, before we talk about cost and future plans for the vehicle, I think we should take it for a drive. So I'm not going to lie, when I first got in this vehicle to drive it, I was nervous. It's almost 20 years old, it's imported from Japan, it's automatic, it's petrol, and it's a V6 3 litre engine. And I just did not know how it would drive, how it would handle, you know, or anything. But I can say, it drives like an absolute dream. I mean, fair enough, we're on a dirt gravel road at the minute, so it's a bit bumpy, but on tarmac, this thing is as quiet as a whisper at 70 mile an hour. There is no engine noise and hardly any road noise. It's not the quickest vehicle, but it's no slouch. It can easily get up to 70, 75 mile an hour 
without any effort at all. I'm super impressed. The seats are comfy. The dashboard is kind of cool. We've got this awesome, I don't even know what you call it. It's basically a level. So it shows you if the level, if the vehicle is level or not, or if it's on a, if it's on a camber, which I think is really handy if I want to sleep in the vehicle, actually. Um, it's proper old school, which I absolutely love. So one of the questions you may have is, uh, why did I import a vehicle from Japan? Why did I import a 20 year old vehicle from Japan when I pretty much could have just bought a VW Transporter or a Transit Custom or basically any other vehicle from the UK? Well, I'll explain. So other than it driving really well, one of the main reasons I wanted this vehicle or a vehicle like this is well, I just wanted something more rugged, something that I could throw around a bit more, something that would be a bit more capable either off-road or if we get snowfall, because my Ford, the Transit Custom, I absolutely love that van, but in a way, it was too nice, you know? It was, I didn't use a lot of the features, like I didn't use the pop-top hardly ever, and I was always worried about scratching, scuffing, or dinging it, whereas this thing, it's so utilitarian, it's so, well, rough around the edges that, yeah, it's there to be used and that's how I feel about it. And as well, it really wasn't that expensive. So that's kind of the main reason. Now I'm not expecting to do any kind of major off-road driving. To be honest, there isn't a great kind of culture of that here in the UK, unlike in the USA, for example, but, you know, maybe I'll join a club, maybe I'll join a green laning club, or if anybody, does four by four driving in the Northeast, you know, um, maybe I'll come to a meet up when it's uh, of course safe and legal to do so. Um, but yeah, just something rugged, rough around the edges, something capable, something that isn't going to get stuck in the snow, like the transit, which got stuck several times in the snow. Whoa, 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 whoa. How did that not hit? And as well as that, this vehicle is incredibly customizable, which means I can modify it and just make it look even cooler. A great example of that is the all-terrain tires that I've got on there. I couldn't get these tires for the Ford Transit. There weren't too many options. With this vehicle, there are tons of options all across the board. So I can really make it my own, which is quite exciting. So aside from it being four wheel drive, rugged and customizable, it's also a really good size. It's a lot smaller than my Ford Transit, but not too much smaller. It's just a little bit narrower and probably about the same length, but inside is the perfect amount of space to make a little photography camper for one person vehicle. And that is what I'm hoping to do with this. So my plan is quite simple. I'm going to remove all of the rear seats. I'm going to build an aluminium frame, which has a single bed, a slide out drawer here in the back for all of my photography gear and a really small unit here for cooking and making a cup of tea. It's not going to be fancy. It's just going to be functional. Although I say that, who knows what it will end up being, but hopefully it's going to be a great little photography vehicle, a great little, I don't know, it's not, I wouldn't really call it a home on wheels by a long stretch, but definitely somewhere to be comfortable for a few nights when I go away on a nice photography trip. <sighs> so this thing here that looks like a, uh, a PC tower, this is the Max Oak EB240, which is essentially a massive power bank. Now I was really excited. I've had this about three or four months now, and it's the first thing that I got for this van because I was, just, I always wanted a battery system that was just easy. I don't understand electrics too much. And I wanted something that was really foolproof, simple to use and reliable. Basically, if you don't know anything about batteries and power, all you need to know is this. It's 2,400 kilowatt hours. My understanding of it is 2,400 kilowatt hours. So if you, if you have, uh, if you have a 12 volt accessory or any electrical accessory, let's say it draws 
100 watts. Most lights and LED lights draw about 10 watts. That means you could run that 100 watt item. Oh man, I have to do the maths. 100, 24 hours. You could run that for 24 hours. Something pulling 100 watts continuous. So I'm confident that this battery will just easily do a week long photography trip. It also has a solar charge controller built in, which means you can get any solar panel, plug it straight in to the input and it will start charging. It will display your input and it will also display your output. So the amount of wattage being drawn and the amount of wattage being put in. It's got four USB sockets. It's got a USB-C port, which is power delivery. It's got a 12 volt and at the back of the unit, it's got two 240 volt, 13 amp normal house sockets. So you can do laptops, kettle, sandwich maker, anything. Believe it or not, this has been the thing that I've most been excited about other than the actual van. It's the first step in turning this into a mini camper. And it's also the most, after the van, it's the most important thing that will be in this vehicle. This is priority. For me, power always has been and always will be number one. So let's finish the video by talking about cost and how much I spent on this vehicle because it is a fresh import from Japan and I did add a few upgrades and it has had quite a lot of work done to it. Now, I thought that it was a very reasonable price. Granted, it's 18 years old, but it has only done about 62,000 miles. So that's relatively low mild mileage. The underside, which is the big risk with these vehicles, the underside of this was perfect. It looked brand new and I've had it wax oiled, which basically is a spray that protects it from, you know, the salty mush that we get on the roads here in the UK, so it won't rust. So the vehicle costs just over 10 grand. And then the extras, such as the tires, the stereo, the curtains, and the tow bar, roughly added up to about a thousand pounds. So all in for this vehicle, I'm looking at about 11 grand. For what you get for your money, I didn't think that was a bad deal at all. Now you can pick them up cheaper on eBay, but like I said before, I really like the idea of getting it from the dealer because I've got that ongoing relationship if anything should go wrong with the vehicle. And I think that's really important because they're imports, you know, a lot of garages won't touch them. So you need to know the right people. Uh, mileage, um, <laughs> it's not great, it's not great. I think, oh man, I haven't like measured it or anything, but it probably does about 20, maybe 22, 25 miles to the gallon if I'm easy. Um, so yeah, not great on mileage, but I don't mind the mileage. It's not my daily driver. It's just for weekend leisure photography trips. So yeah, I can handle that. So that's about everything I can think to tell you regarding this vehicle. Um, the next stage is gonna be to get it into a comfortable weekend warrior. So, you know, a little bed, little cooker, something for those leisure photography trips away. Um, and that's gonna be an ongoing process. I've got no experience, so it's gonna be really interesting to see uh, what I do with this vehicle. But guys, thank you so much for watching. A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this content and their continued support. If you're looking for a website, like maybe to host an online gallery portfolio, uh, you can even register your domain with them. Um, definitely use squarespace.com because it is, it's just like super easy. It's just intuitive drag and drop system. So even if you've got no web experience, you can build a website. I've done a couple of them. Um, so if you do want a website for your whatever, you know, pro assuming photography, but maybe not, maybe for your van, Maybe, I don't know, maybe you're a van lifer. <laughs> Go to squarespace.com forward slash Heaton and uh, give it a free try. If you like free trial, use the offer code Heaton for 10% off your first purchase. So, with that being said, until next time, bye for now.